Welcome to the Dice Tower, a series of videos about games and the people who played them. And now, here's your host, Joe Stedman. Now, back to this card, back to these units here. The Germans, I said with a card, two strength German. Let me explain what that means. Here's the bunker. And this would be a two strength bunker because there's two chits. And that's because it's got a depth marker on it. Now, the depth marker could be various things. You don't know what it is until you flip it. Same with the, the, the thing. You don't know what this is until you flip it. You can't flip it until you meet certain conditions. But once you flip it, you can find out how strong it is. So you know this is a two strength. And then it's got on there the BZ and the MG, which means that you can only fire at it if you have a bazooka and a machine gun. If you don't have the bazooka and machine gun, there's a chart and it'll tell you what the results. And it may be a negative result for the Americans in that case because you don't have the capability of even destroying that bunker. And then if you do, if you, if you do have a favorable result, you could possibly eliminate the depth marker. And the depth marker for this one, for instance, is a one strength. So the total value of this would be a three strength bunker, but you need a bazooka and a machine gun. And so this guy by himself, this American unit here, if he was attacking this bunker, he's got enough strength and he's got a bazooka, but he doesn't have a machine gun. So he's not going to have all the prerequisites. So then it'll dictate what will happen. It's not going to be a good thing. And same with the regular German units that come on the game. When you reveal those, those will also have certain little aspects to them that you're going to need to try to defeat it. Like this one's got a FL. I know for that means flank. You have to flank it in order to get the best result. And there's the 88 on there, which means that this unit, in certain scenarios, can actually call for artillery. Now back up here to the, the, the cards. So as the game starts, uh, this, all these little boxes are going to have little token. You're going to stack up all your markers on here when they come on the beaches and stuff. But the first thing you do is you flip a card. And you have, the boxes are all laid out, so it's real simple. You flip a card, and this landing east. So you look at the landing. Everyone has landing in the east. Then you do the landing west, and you figure out what happens with all the units landing in the west. And then you flip an event card, and this is for the the event phase of the game. And then you do what's ever in the middle of the thing here. And then you go to the Germans, and the Germans get to do all their firing attacks. And so you flip the first card. This is where the Germans are going to fire in the east. Then you flip the next card. It's where the Germans are going to fire in the west. And then finally you have another event card. And that's basically it. And then there's all the little actions that you can do. And, and there's a whole bunch there's a whole bunch of things that you can there's a whole bunch of things that you can do in this with engineers and all the other stuff that just gives the game a lot of flavor but that's basically the nuts and the bolts of how the game work um, I like the card aspect of the game because every time I play it's gonna be different the cards are pretty simple to understand there's gonna be all kinds of data on these cards to comprehend so you might get a little overwhelmed when you first learn the game but it's not too bad. Like this card, it's got this little black. So that means the Germans actually can use their artillery this turn as long as they meet all their prerequisites. And I, I love these charts because these charts are going to break it all down for you. Like, for instance, I showed you uh, on this chart, it shows you the unit types. Like a full-strength infantry is going to have everything here. But these are the breakdowns. Bazooka, Bangal you know, Bangalore, torpedo, a mortar, demolitions, whatever. And so that breaks down what uh, the prerequisites are. And let me show you the fire chart because that, that is kind of interesting. It's just a flow chart. So first, if you want to attack a German, first you look, do, do you attack the possessed weapons? I told you about the little numbers. So if I, do it, if I do possess the necessary weapons, then I go to this side, if not there. So I say, okay, yeah, I do. Then attack strength less, attack strength equal, attack strength greater but not double, and attack strength is at least double. So there's only four options. Then you go to the next. If you have a lot of good stuff, it's German destroyed. If it's a little, then you can could, you could flip them disrupted, which basically, uh, if you play any war games, you know what disrupted means. And if it's a negative, if you attack with less strength, the German gains a depth marker, which is a bad thing. So it actually might be a bad situation to attack. And some, you're not going to know what the prerequisites are necessarily until after you attack. So like this, you don't even get to reveal the depth marker until you meet certain prerequisites. And this is a simple flow chart. So I like that aspect of the game. Um, another thing I forgot to mention is you only get to move two of your units per side, east and two on the west, per turn. So you're really trying to figure out, oh my goodness, what, what American unit do I want to move up the beach? Or uh, what unit is going to get shot at? Because you don't know what fire cards are going to come up. And the tide's also moving up. So if you've got Americans that are down on the beach in the low tide area and it's coming up to high tide and they don't move, they're going to die. 
there's also headquarters. So once you start getting the headquarters, which don't start don't come in until the later waves of the game, once you get the headquarters, then anything that's within the command radius of that headquarters unit then can be activated. So you can move multiple units at once. And so it really feels like D-Day because those first waves are getting mowed down. And they can't do anything because they're the game really helps you to simulate that because you can only move two and so you've got all these guys spread all over the beach and you can only move two to safety and even then it's not necessarily safety and uh, I've seen full regiments mowed down in just a matter of a few turns but once the headquarters start landing things get better and there's two generals in that come in the historical uh, general coda for instance he comes in and he helps you to do things you actually have tanks that can come in uh, the tanks help the barrage and things but a lot of the tanks are destroyed real easy especially in the landing. Like on the turn one tanks, there's like four or five tank units that can possibly come in on turn one, but it's really hard to get them in because of the way the game is designed. Most of them sink, just like a D-Day. They sink right out in the water. They don't even get to land. Um, the game really, when I play the game, it just it's like most solitaire games that I like, like D-17 and Ambush. It takes like a movie-like feel to it, and I start sympathizing with my counters as they get mowed down. And I... Those dirty Germans, you know, I'm getting mad at the Germans because they keep on just... I might get the, I might get the action card for the Germans turn after turn that's shooting the same bunker. And so one beach may be just getting wasted where, like, dog, you know, uh, Fox Green Beach is getting wasted, but Easy easy Red is having an easy time. So I can start diverting forces that way, but then two turns later, then they start... It just it works out well. I love it. Now, it is a decision game, and I like some of the decision games, but I've had some issues with their quality over the years. And really, there's not that much problems with this quality-wise. I found a few little typos in the rule book. Uh, a couple of the counters have some mess-ups. Uh, like one of the counters, they just printed it wrong. And it, there's, I think I found two counters that got typos on them. And I'm sure Decision Games will probably fix those eventually. Or if you request it, maybe they'll make you the new counter. And it's just all cosmetic. I was able to get a pen and actually fix the counter. Um, so it's not really that bad as far as that goes. There's a paper map, but it's a pretty big map, and you can lay plastic over it, and I thought it was fine. But overall, I, I, I enjoyed the game. I think it was worth the money. John Butterfield's also redoing RAF, which is another great solitaire game, and it's also using the card-driven. So hopefully, if I can eventually afford it, I'll go buy that game and, and do a review of that game as well. So if you have any questions, please send, me, uh, send them to me, and I'd like to answer them for you. But that's basically it. It's not a complicated game. It's kind of a lot to digest when you first get it. Uh, there's, a, there's a real simple scenario that only uses one of the two beaches so that when you play, you don't have to digest all those rules at the same time. Definitely, if you like solitaire games, I'd highly recommend this game that you get it. If you like D-Day, you should get it even if you don't like solitaire games because you can play it two-player. and It might be fun to play two-player, set it up, and just leave it alone. So look for it. Decision Games, John Butterfield. D-Day on Long Beach. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.